Hey, this is JC. I am here with James Bray, who is the illustrator of Diabolical, which is a game that would be best described as it's a action strategy game. Uh, we call it semi simultaneous uh, because you are revealing your commands at the same time as the other villains. See, now, ladies and gents, I'm the villain of our podcast, alleged, alleged villain, and they have turned my life into a card game. So, what do you think makes this most unique here? Um, I think both the art style and gameplay is unique. Uh, it may have some similarities to some games, like uh, Seven Wonders, but uh, we like to put our own spin on every uh, aspect of the game. So it's got a, a really neat sense of humor to itself. It's, it's very Evil Genius-esque in a certain sort of sense. Some of these cards are hilarious with these schemes, one of which is uh, you know, tricky and your objective is to take over Delaware. You, uh, with your villain, build your lair, rack up enough scheme points, and then you take over the world. And you know, you're all playing villains, and you're all trying for the same objectives. Uh, I had a really, really fun time with this. Hey, so for your Kickstarter which you guys are getting ready to launch yep. uh, where can they find you how can they track you how can they participate check you out yeah, um, well all of our social media is playdiabolical.com or playdiabolical uh, Facebook um, we also have a Twitter it's at playdiabolical outstanding well thank you James appreciate it yeah thanks a lot appreciate your time yep This is Demetrius Witherspoon, writer and director of Submerge Series, and you are listening to Gaming with Scott. Hi, this is Josh JC with Gaming with Scott, and I am here with James Raggi. Yeah. Hello. Live on the floor of Gen Con, yes. and uh, I'm looking at quite the impressive catalog here, James. Yes, booth 3002 if you're going to get this posted in time for that to matter. <laughs> copy that, copy that. Uh, it will be going out today, so... Cool. Give us an overview. Uh, I know you say uh, strange, weird, horror. Weird, horror, and fantasy role-playing. Correct. And this artwork, I'm telling you, folks, the, the tagline is true, true to the mission here. Can you kind of give us an idea of what differentiates you from a lot of other adventure supplements? Uh, basically, we have no limits. Uh, and I say that... Uh, Sorry, I'm screwing up this quick promo opportunity. Yeah, uh, we just have a bunch of authors that don't really fit into mainstream gaming. They've got some ideas that you know other publishers won't touch, or they've got ideas that are too strange, or they want to experiment with the format. I'm all for all of that. So I, I've got some stuff that's won a lot of awards, is still up for a lot of awards, and you know it seems the mainstream of gaming like it and then i've got other stuff that is just really for a select crowd and you know i like having both uh because it's to me this is the imagination this is creativity and it's not it's not uh, constrained by any format all the authors work with what they want to work with they don't have to conform really to many standards to fit into the lotfp line the the rules, you know, the rules is a really loose, old-school class level system that you can really mutate and do anything with, and most of the authors change things here and there that they don't like in the rules. So, you know... Uh, and to clarify, what yeah. these are is these are adventure supplements that will plug and play with pretty much any rule system. The focus has been placed on the story, correct? Yeah, I, I would say so. Uh, now, story in this... Okay, uh, it's story, not story in the sense of here's the plot line you've got to follow. Most of these are here's the situation, here are the characters involved in the situation, go. You know, there's no assumed ending. There's no end point that the characters are supposed to be moving f towards. They determine that themselves based on the situations they encounter. All right, so when people want to find you out there on the interwebs and that sort of thing where would you like to direct them to go lotfp.com that's got links to everywhere else all of my social media all of my web stores and the pdf stores so lotfp.com will get you everywhere all right thanks james appreciate your time okay thank you very much hey this is jeffrey combs and you're listening to gaming with scott hi this is jc with gaming with scott i'm here with michael piper the ceo of michael publishing llc we publish the Fantasy Illustration Library, which is a set of fine art books of original fantasy paintings by artists from all over the world. Now, I was taken by this. It's uh, the Fantasy Illustration Library. These are high-quality production books. It's got a gilded cover, and the artwork inside is stunning. Not just the quality and caliber of the work, 
but also the descriptions are made by people who know a lot about this topic, not just in terms of the artwork itself, in terms of the composition level, but also historically how it ties back into mythology and um, you know the human subconscious and that sort of angle of things. Um, what's your philosophy with the submissions with the artists? We handpick all of the artists for each volume. Uh, we have produced two volumes so far. Volume one was entitled Lands and Legends, which includes things like Shangri-La, El Dorado, uh, Avalon, Camelot, and then D uh, characters like the Witch of Endor, Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, uh, the Hunchback of Notre Dame, Dracula, Frankenstein, the Naga, Silkies, Kelpies, a lot of the more obscure mythological creatures. We do write-ups based upon the background and history of them. Each artist then has a biographical section on the narrative page and then they normally do a paragraph where they discuss the artwork. At the bottom of the page we have a signature line so if you take the book around to conventions or shows and the artists are there you can get them to sign their page. Each painting in the book is a full 9 by 12 in size all the way out to the edges. It's called full bleed and we did this so that the images would appear to literally float right off the page for you and look larger than life. It allows you to have the opportunity to really see the detail in the artwork. Now, this is volume one? That's volume one. And can volume you give us two is gods and goddesses. The artists were given that theme and allowed to pick subjects within the theme of deities from the different mythologies. We have over 23 different mythological cultures represented, ranging from Afro-American, uh, American Indian, Arabian, Aztec, down to the familiar Japanese, Chinese, Greek, Roman, Egyptian, Norse, to the more obscure Bali, Hawaiian, Mesopotamian, Slavic, and Welsh. All right, well, if people want to get a hold of you and learn more and, and maybe view the product and that sort of thing, where can they go? How can they do that? We have a company website called at www.michaelpublishing.net. Our books are listed there, limited edition, serial numbered and signed lithographs of art from the books are also listed there. Well, thank you, Mike. I appreciate it, definitely. Thank you, sir. Is that okay? This is Bishop Stevens, a.k.a. Lord Raz, from Submerge, and I'm listening to some chump, sitting here with some chump, wasting my time with some chump on some off-the-wall radio podcast show called Gaming with Scott. Peace! Hey, this is JC. I am here with... Peter Tchaikovsky. Creator of... Rock, Paper, Cynic. Which I think is one of the funniest comics I've seen in a long time. Can you give us an overview? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so it's a webcomic that's kind of about... Uh, celebrating the things that make the world awesome, but also poking fun at the things that make it not so awesome. So, you know, I might write comics about dinosaurs or turtles or video games or whatever's exciting me that week, but then I'll also write comics about crappy things like Internet Explorer or Sean Bean dying in movies. Um, <laughs> and I'll call those out for what they are. Um, yeah, and I've been working on it for about, I guess, almost eight years now. Um, and uh, today I'm at Gen Con kind of selling some of my, my favorite prints and stuff like that to folks to introduce them to the comic. I was saying, now I've seen a lot of, of comic work over the years, but there's a sarcastic wit in these comics that I just find delightful. Um, if people want to find more about your work, where can they look you up? Yeah, I mean, the best place to go is rockpapercynic.com, um, is where I post new comics every Wednesday. So there's a few hundred comics you can read there in the archives. Uh, and then I just started a new webcomic called Is It Canon, which is isitcanon.com. Um, and uh, that one's like very specifically focused on, on geek culture, pop culture parody. It's kind of about ruining all the movies and shows that people love for them by like thinking of like, oh, what if it happened this way instead? <laughs> and really horrible things happening. Like what if, what if, what if uh, Deadpool decided, became aware of clickbait and decided he wanted to get attention by dressing up as every dis Disney princess? We had a comic for that. <laughs> oh my God, that's awesome. Look folks, look Peter up. It is definitely worth your time. Thank you very much, Peter. Yeah, thank I appreciate you. It. This is Casper Van Dien, Lieutenant Johnny Rico from Starship Troopers, and you are listening to Gaming with Scott. Rico's Roughnecks! <laughs>